The as soon as he it. talks, it's less cool. The idea of Nightcrawler is cooler than Nightcrawler. Once he starts talking, yeah. or in his high German voice. And also, we could use less geez. blue people. Yeah, there are a lot of blue there's mutants. so many blue mutants. I just want you all out yourself as blue racists, bluest. No, you know that's not true. I own Avatar on HD DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Filmhouse, everybody. This week's episode is sponsored by Robin Hood and Upstart. I've got my friends Elise, James, and Adam here with me this week. Your my name's X-Men, Daniel. if you will. Ooh. X and women. X Sorry. People. Extraordinarily X-days. gifted humans. <laughs> Youngsters. Yeah. I don't like how he calls them that. What are we talking about, <laughs> Dan? Creepy. Youngsters. Uh, yeah, we're, we're here to talk about uh, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, after 20 years, this is the way Fox's franchise of X-Men ends. Mm-hmm. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Uh, it was a pretty fumbled take, if you ask me, uh, on a pretty classic story. It was bland, felt cheap, mm-hmm. uh, uninteresting villains. I don't know. It was just a big jumbled mess. I don't. It was an almost two-hour runtime, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Almost nothing happened. There were no <laughs> themes. Um, you know, I feel, I feel like X Men was always great with allegory of like civil rights or you know t- the teenage body changing yeah. or whatever. No needle will touch my skin again. Yeah. Magneto says it. Mm-hmm. And we all know what he's talking about. Not exactly an allegory. Oh. Is heroin addiction? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think after this, maybe the X Men could take a break for a while. <laughs> they have Ho- to. Hopefully, yeah. Feige. Feige. I still don't know how you say that. I don't that, think no. X-Men has much of a choice. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't have a say in the matter? Well, I guess behind the scenes, right? Uh, Disney just owns Fox now. Yeah. So they're free to do whatever they want with these X-Men. And I guess no one saw this movie. So oh, God, no one's no. going no to ask, well, what happened to Jean Grey? I mean, the Phoenix. If the reviews were good, would people have seen it? That's a good question. Hmm. It w- this was the worst opening of any X Men film. Yeah. It made like thirty three million dollars in America, Man. which is really bad for a two hundred million budget. But really yeah. good for fans of the Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no longer the worst opening yeah. in franchise history. I so I was a little confused by this movie because I, I was told by James and Dan and the internet that this was the worst movie ever made and it's going to be a snore fest and it's good. It's so my expectations already were low. And then everyone around me said it's so low, um, that I didn't hate the movie so much. Whereas when I went to, to apocalypse, I went in vi- like 50, 50 with like a small hope because days of future past was good. If you look at the rotten tomato score, I would say flip, uh, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. I would say Dark Phoenix is better than Apocalypse. I yeah, it, it's oh, yeah. more. It is. I agree. It is slower. It's more boring. But I was ready for that. I didn't feel like I was promised action because James was like, "It's a boring movie. You're not gonna have a good time." I went, "Okay, cool." And so I wasn't. I don't know. I, I guess I just went in with tempered expectations. So I don't think it deserves a 23 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Dark mm. Phoenix is a better, well, better made movie with less cheese, but it's not well, as entertaining as when, Apocalypse. When I saw Apocalypse, I was like, "This feels like." Fan, fan fiction or like fan service, like mm. when a YouTube channel is like, how they get that Batman costume? <laughs> they like basically, it's the it's the movie version of that short film where Batman fought Predator. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what Apocalypse <laughs> was. Once you start looking at it closely, you're like, oh, this is not good. You can and see makeup peeling like, off. Like things of the are not great. And why why is this happening? They're mm. clearly more interested in the excitement of it. But I was okay with that, rather than make something that is supposed to be cerebral, but not actually, like at Dan said, have a theme or execute on anything. It's just... just yeah, what was this movie even this, saying? This movie felt like a waste. At least Apocalypse, I was like, eh, well, there's some stuff happening. Hmm. Like, I think it's stupid, Olivia Munn in Psylocke cosplay, but at least <laughs> it's there. This movie, for yeah. me, had nothing. Yeah. Well, there I mean, were no Easter eggs, just about. I mean, Probably not lame ones like that you really have to dig for. Yeah. Are we in spoiler territory? No, no, let, let's hang off for a few okay. minutes just I'm for those, those people that are waiting to see what we have to say before going I, or not I, going to see Dark Phoenix. I guess one of the things, I don't expect themes from these X-Men movies anymore. I think after, I think X-Men 2, I think that was probably the last one where it was Brian Singer pushing really hard the themes of being persecuted sucks and we shoot ice from our hands. I'm like, I get it. I totally get the, your, your plight. That's crazy. That's uh, some interesting ideas in there. But like, even that movie hasn't aged very well. I actually watched it. It was on a. It was just on TV the, the other X2? day. X two. X two. It's still. It's pretty cheesy. Like I don't yeah. think there's ever been a really great uh, X Men movie until 
I would say Logan? like Logan's a it's, a it's own thing, but then uh, Days of Future Past, which I only saw the one time, so I just uh, I remember it being good. Adam, I would disagree uh. and argue that The Last Stand pushes some pretty heavy-handed <laughs> themes. Of course. Well, in an argument, one person has to be right and the other person has to be wrong, <laughs> so I welcome the I would challenge. say they're asking mus- mutants to willfully, you know, give up their powers in mm. that movie, and mm. some are protesting it, and some are assimilating. So it's why a, do they wait in deal. line to get their mutant powers removed in the last stand when they're being guarded with people with guns that, that, have, will, the that, that have the serum? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't <laughs> understand that either. I would right. just run up to the gun. As always, the answer yeah. with most of these movies is no one cares. <laughs> well. Uh, I, think so, I can't argue with you the the there. It's impossible to discuss the X-Men film franchise without talking about kind of the garbled mess that it's become. Someone tried to do a timeline of everything. It, makes it just no doesn't sense. make any no. sense. No. But it's probably because it was started, it, it's it's constantly been improvised this whole way. Mm-hmm. Very poorly. There was no plan. There like, was no plan. Dark Phoenix needed to be set up. It could be the end of a story, mm-hmm. but you I, can't I, do it all I in two hours. I make the same hours. argument for Apocalypse. That that That's where I disagree with James saying Apocalypse was a waste. Because Apocalypse is a Thanos-level, lev- yeah, like... cool villain. Cool, yeah. He, he's a big villain. He's a big deal. He's a, He should be built up to. And they... <laughs> It's just such a throwaway. Yeah, well, James, yeah. you mentioned about how in Apocalypse they garble the Dark Phoenix stuff already. Yeah, well, if, Same thing, yeah. If you recall, in the end of Apocalypse, Jean yeah. Grey saves the day by With tapping the into the Phoenix yeah. Force, yes. which is immediately ignored in this movie because they're like, no, something else causes it. Solar. So it, it none of no one cares. The closest <laughs> thing they have to a Feige is Simon Kinberg. Yeah, who this was his directorial debut on a Which, $200 again, million like, dollar I love, I love, I love how people on Reddit or whatever forums are, are like, I can't believe they got this guy who did Last Stand to come do it. Like, he's been there the, almost yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Okay, so or it's not the like reset, he just, Since first class, he's been around. Right? Well, he was there for Last Stand, too. Was he? Yeah. yeah. So What do you do on it? He was a writer. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, but, but he was probably also on set all day and yeah. had just, notes. And I'm probably, just saying he's you know, been there a whole time. So like, it's yeah. not like you can just say, "Well, why would they bring back that?" Guy? He's been there the whole yeah. time. So I, I would argue, and I uh, I will argue with you on this one at least, much better than Last Stand. La- Last Stand's no, like Last, Last Stand's entertaining. Last Last In a Stand's stupid like way. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, it, but it's a, <laughs> this movie was a snore. It was. Well, you know, you're. I, I, I am being unfair because, like I said, I I did catch parts of X two. Like not too long ago, I went, "Oh wow, this has not aged well." Uh, Last Stand is probably not much better different. with time. I think um, <laughs> it, it has. <laughs> Last Stand's a fine wine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just I think this movie still had at least cooler moments. At least um, like that. The, the, I w- always think of the moment from um, Age of Ultron when it looks like a comic book spread in the very opening. There were some moments in here I'm like, oh, I could see this being lifted from a comic book. Yeah. Well, mostly, mostly stuff Magneto's doing. Yeah. And we'll get into and, spoiler talk about no, that. No, yeah. I'm, but, I won't say too much, but yeah. like, even like Nightcrawler has a cool scene. Yeah. And like, he's yeah. one cool scene. There's some cool like comic book moments, which is like honestly why I really watch these movies. But uh, yeah, I, I, I guess just like just get it over with, be done with it so that Marvel can do this correctly and we can mm-hmm. see a Dark Phoenix movie in another 20 years. I don't <laughs> like Last Stand because it does anything cool. It doesn't do anything cool. Uh, it's, it's Wolverine had those magic pants. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't actually like it because it's bad. And I think, oh, it's so bad, it's good. There's just stuff in it that I kind of enjoy for like weird reasons. Kelsey Grammer, we, just say Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer Beast, and I, I kind of like, I love Charles Xavier and Magneto's friendship. And there's like weird friendship things of them in that movie that I just kind of get off yeah. on. So I don't know. There are weird things I enjoy. It, about it has a cool moment. And I don't know why we're talking about Last Stand, but like, <laughs> where like he <laughs> moves, I know Magneto moves here. the Golden Gate Bridge, but yeah. then it's sort of dumbed down by the fact that it, he's walking across the bridge with, you know, the Phoenix. Or it's like, yeah. here she is, the Phoenix, walking in a trench coat. <laughs> so because cool. It's in Last Stand that Mystique, mm-hmm. yeah, she gets hit with the serum. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. Magneto's like, no, good, no, I yeah. don't care about you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I like you, Blue. <laughs> There's just like stuff in that I'm like, it's just weird, and, so, and I kind of... Well, uh, here's, here's something I can tell you that The Last Stand has over this. Yeah. Better acting. True. Huh. The acting in this movie is trash. Yeah. And it's not They didn't have anything to work with. It's, well, it's not necessarily James McAvoy or Michael Fassbender's fault. No. They're fine. But the actual professional actors who we came into this new timeline with the focus on are, are basically not 
they're they're relegated to a supporting role in this, and it's carried by Sophie Turner, who I think has talent, but doesn't know how what to do when the script is terrible. Yeah, mm-hmm. and which was you, apparently being rewritten almost every yeah. day. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's all really really bad um, from that perspective. I will say, Last Stand. I think the reason Last probably Elise is tapping into this Last Stand stuff is because Last Stand can be cheesy, but you can still get something out of it when you have a thespians. Yeah, when you have a <laughs> six decade veteran of the theater like competing with each yeah. other against scene chewing, like it could still be compelling. Mm-hmm. Well, it, for, I would just say, from my perspective, a boring a boring movie is oftentimes for me worse. Than a bad movie, yeah. yeah, and that's just that's just my own personal. And you're saying this take is boring. And these are it's almost like this is the perfect experiment because they made one story, they made the same story twice. One yeah. is bad and one is boring. Okay. Forgetful. And in both both situations, also when we throw Apocalypse into the mix, it's not the same story. But I think Apocalypse was bad, but I enjoyed sitting there watching it more than this, which I just thought was boring. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's just me and how I generally view things, but. You you were saying the the thespians from the original series were kind of what the show, what it hung its hat on. And I think when they restarted it with First Class and they had Fassbender and McAvoy, Mm -hmm. and that relationship was kind of the key Mm -hmm. to the whole series. Mm -hmm. And those guys were in the same scene once? In this this movie? movie? Maybe twice? Hmm. Well, I mean, they're 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 together so, for a little bit. So you then, take whatever that is, that central heart or crux of of the whole series. Mm-hmm. And you don't put those guys together at all, yeah. or even well, give Magneto anything to do with the, the movie. Well, the issue with all these movies is, and this has been all the X Men movies. Almost every time they do it, it's a it's a reboot, even though it's called X Two or X Three, mm-hmm. or it's Days of Future Past. Like, uh, what was the the Apocalypse? All that stuff. Like, they just it's always like. But what if Magneto started a family? Like, what? What are we doing? Like, what's? <laughs> why do we do this? And then also, they're unclear on their own timelines. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, correct me if I'm wrong. Magneto in First Class was shown to be a Holocaust survivor, right? Yes. Correct. This movie makes it to the 90s. 92. 92. 92. And it's current day Fastbender. No yeah. aging up. No nothing. <laughs> we walked. And, <laughs> we walked out of the theater, and James is like. Well, what's going to happen over the course of the next <laughs> yeah. years that he turns into Ian McKellen? It, it's this weird thing where this franchise has been at odds with itself. Where there, someone's saying, "Well, we got to catch up to the 2000s hit X Men, the first one." Or like, <laughs> no one's saying that. Yeah. Like, you don't. You clearly already. You made it very clear in Days of Future Past that there's a diverging timeline, mm-hmm. and you have new actors and, sure, and people look. Okay, I think we we all accept this, but now they're like they're trying to get to this weird. Like point where they, place. where they meet, yeah. but then also they're like, well, it's a different timeline, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah. So it's like, just pit. W- there's too many, too many cooks in the kitchen. As clearly. far as I'm concerned, well, it's cooking. Oh Lo- God, no! It's a microwave. <laughs> Save for Logan. I think Days of Future Past is the best movie of the new yeah. movies. I, well, I would argue. Well, also Logan is another perfect example. Everyone loves it, right? Yeah. But also, it basically pretends like none of the other movies really happened. Yeah. You kind of just. I think it's, they even say in the movie they're like those are just comics ignore them so yeah it's it, kind of this weird capsule unto itself which is fine I actually yeah. kind of prefer mm-hmm. those if if Fox can't do an MCU type yeah make thing them episodic yeah just just do something unique and different every time yeah. and don't don't try to drag us into your weird timeline yeah Not do a fan. do a um like a thing that just kind of follows uh, Beast, Beast? What, uh, <laughs> well I was trying to be, Pragmatic and say uh, havoc. No, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh God, the guy from American Horror Story. Uh, Ethan uh, um, uh, Evan oh, Peters. Quicksilver. No. Yeah, Quicksilver. Just, just, just follow. Do like a Quicksilver. Okay, we didn't even ask you. Jeez, always like she's a, always a listening. Quicksilver movie really where it's X-Men. like it's still all the X Men, but it's a little mm-hmm. bit more focused. On, Call it Quicksilver's you know. Day Off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, well, no big. Quicksilver just disappeared oh, he, in this film. All the he, like, fun that his ankle. he yeah. had uh, is gone. That must have been a like, deleted scene or something. Well, it's so yeah. weird because it feels like, despite weird like up and down reviews of the, like the new timeline, mm-hmm. people have always been like, "Man, those Quicksilver scenes though yeah. are great." Mm-hmm. Brian Singer, he may be he may be a rapist, yep. but man, can he direct Fuck. amazing yeah. slow motion Quicksilver scenes or whatever it may be? Yes, Matthew, I guess that, Matthew Vaughn got it started. Matthew yeah. Vaughn did it first. It's the one so thing they did better than Marvel. 
<clears throat> was Quicksilver? No, I forget. Yeah, because in- It was Days of Future Past. No, he was in- was he in first in Days of Future Past? I think the first one was that. Okay. Was, yeah. Then yes. All right. Sorry, Brian. Because the yes. 80s, he's playing the Yeah, yeah. yeah they're games. breaking Magneto yeah, yeah. out. That was that one scene. Actually, the, the making of that scene is actually really well done, too. How it was pretty practical. But they shot it. It's, it's, like, it's like, oh, well, those are actually really cool. And then you get to... And then he even has the one in Apocalypse where the expansion blows up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, getting all the students out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but everyone's like, man, those are fucking sweet. And then in this movie, they were like, well, we've got one of our own, mm-hmm. except it sucks. Yeah. And then they don't ever do it again. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. he's out for the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah. He has one quip and he's Which like, never I, doing this shit again. I don't understand. Even if if I can run fast at full speed, I still think I'd be fast with a twisted ankle. Mm-hmm. So why just can't he just go half fast. as yeah. fast with a twisted ankle? I still feel like that'd be pretty useful. It, it's, it's funny because you have a... A, a literally walking while well, not walking example of Professor Xavier where his legs don't work but his powers still work. Quicksilver's power should be he could move quickly and they even show that I, spoiler I guess that when he they do his cool space scene or his fast scene he's in space where he has no there is no friction there is the vacuum of space and he's running around in zero G so he clearly can move fast without his legs or he's like swimming I don't know yeah. how he's doing it regardless yeah. you're right his power is to move quickly so yeah. now you would it'd be kind of funny where you're like, oh, he has one leg. He now he moves fast on one leg, but he's only half as fast. Yeah. Like, okay, you could do something fun with that, but instead they're like, Evan's got to go do something. It, it just screams of people not really caring. Um, yeah. One of the biggest. This is the culmination of having Mystique, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique, be the leader. Point, yeah, the main point of focus for this whole franchise. Which I'm guessing they did because she's popular actress. Yeah, that's definitely why they did was? it. And it was a terrible thing because it still it still never made sense. It made sense for Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't she never uses her power. I know. She doesn't use her power. Mm-hmm. She uses her power to look normal. Yeah. And then she flies a jet. Like that's all she does. <laughs> which is the stupidest thing in the world. I don't know. It's, it's stuff like that that bothers me the most. I I get. I mean, when when did uh, First Class come out? That was her that was her debut in the X Men franchise. Mm-hmm. We're, we're uh, ten years ago. Let's just say whatever. I very smart of whoever to say. Great casting. Yeah. Hey, she's she's hot right now. She's only gonna get hotter. Let's let's cast her. She's gonna be the leader. Who's she gonna be? Mystique. Bad casting. Mm-hmm. Like I you had Rebecca Romaine Samus player originally, which was perfect. Yeah, I really enjoyed her. Mm-hmm. She great. she had a she had an attitude for a character that like she didn't have to say a lot to ex- be expressively yeah. play that character. She was scary. Yeah. And I don't think anyone ever went, man, give me more of that mystique. I, I want to see when she was the leader of the X-Men. If you said that out loud, you would have been beaten down. <laughs> like, like, it just, it didn't make any sense for her character to be that. It, it, it's odd. Also, just for the sake of things, aesthetically, there is a shot in this movie where there's a team of f- six X-Men and three of them are blue standing yeah. by, side by side, <laughs> yeah. and it looks just terrible. It, <laughs> it's really not good. Yeah, there, there's one scene where two blue characters are like face to face, and the whole screen was just blue. Yeah, it's just and, blinding blue light. Yeah. I mean, they, they even tr- kind of try to fix that in first class where they had a red version of Nightcrawler. Yeah. I forgot uh, about that guy. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Azazel or mm-hmm. Azrael or whatever his name yeah. was. But I was like, okay, cool, you, you're breaking up the blue Hue a little bit. This one, yes. Half your team is blue. It's strange. Also, it does the best thing you can ever do with a franchise like the X Men, which has just decades and decades and decades of lore and characters to pull from. Create a new one yeah. that has dreadlocks that attack. <laughs> you could pick from one thousand. So many things on a conservative estimate I, of mutants. So that many things. I thought he because you guys. Dan spoiled it for me. He texted me. He's like, by the way, there's a mutant who has dreadlock powers. And I went, well, this is going to be terrible. I remember seeing the movie going, oh, that's not so bad. It's just, it's like they didn't want to make Omega Red because Omega Red wouldn't have worked. Mm-hmm. I was like, I guess well, you could have made Omega Red. I think the director. Sure. Why not? I yeah. think the director said he wanted a a mutant from a specific racial group, it, which it, I understand. The dude did have a name. Which I understand, but I think I would have been happier if they just Red Lotus Sorry. found a new huh. origin for just some already known character. Yeah. I don't. It's just also, man, dreadlock hair. Really, like it's like the worst thing you could come up with. That's like yeah. when so you, you lose your power to, if you get a haircut. When you used to pretend to play X Men mm. with your friends, 
and then one guy who didn't really understand how stuff works, he'd draw on his sheet of paper that was uh, uh, blank at the top and then three lines below a character with dreadlocks that did whips around. Like, that's like a child's idea of what a complex, <laughs> cool mutant would be. A simple child, just, yeah. if you will. I just feel like there's so much you could have picked from that yeah. isn't makeup dreadlock face. It, it is a similar problem. And give problem. him a name of some character no one's ever heard of. It's a similar problem they had in Last Stand, I remember, where Wolverine yeah. is running through the woods, the nondescript woods, and then he's just getting attacked by nondescript mutants, and it's just guys in jackets, mm-hmm. and they're just <laughs> jumping. They have a like, lot of tattoos, right? Yeah, maybe. I think one guy could shoot stuff from yeah. his hands, but... Yeah, well, Storm just fired lightning bolts like she was Palpatine <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I was like, was she not doing anything else? She she did some weather control in space, which shouldn't work, but... <laughs> yeah. it, it's re- really weird. She, that shouldn't work at she all. She used her powers when yeah. they shouldn't make sense, and then when she was, you know, like on Earth where she controls the weather, mm-hmm. she shoots lightning from her hands. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, no, no, no. Like that's when I guess you have a script supervisor on set. We go, no, she, well, she summons the lightning. They don't. They don't care. They don't care. <laughs> they clearly didn't care about anything because yeah, like like Adam said, there's one point in the movie where she freezes something shut in space, and I'm like, I don't Where'd think. Water come yeah, from? I don't think that's how it works. Okay. Number one. Also, in that same sequence, no one has a helmet. Well, and that was maybe the best sequ- action sequence in the film. It's yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, how are they all breathing up there? I don't know. They, Air. they, none of the, one, they, at one point. The thing is, you can do, you can go one of two ways. They're in space. No one has a helmet. Ignore you don't it. think about it. Yeah, that's fine. Magic space. We're making the rules. But at one point, they do go. Well, we should put a helmet on <laughs> one guy. Mm-hmm. And they make a big deal about it, they tape it on. And then they make a big deal about putting a helmet on one guy. But then. They also send another guy with that helmet guy that doesn't have a helmet on. So why did you give? Why did you even introduce helmets to this in the first place? Look, I knew what I was in for when they said that spaceship's moving too fast. Slow it down. Take it away, Cyclops. And his chair just oh, yeah. moves, <laughs> yeah. and he goes down in a little turret thing <laughs> that he looks. I forgot that. about the turret. And I just I wanted to see. He opened his <laughs> eyes. By the way, to space. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, they had that built into the jet. So yeah. they do that all the time. Yeah. He goes down into that little thing. And I, I just like that. <laughs> Someone can go, Scott, we don't want to talk to you anymore. No! And they just put him down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> only his chair. Yeah. What, if, what if someone else is sitting in his chair so then like Beast is down there and he's like, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> gets sucked out into space. So, yeah, that, that, he, <laughs> his like, at eyeballs least get James sucked James Marsden out. as uh, Cyclops, you're kind of like, Okay, it's James Morrison. He's doing a weird little tough guy thing against mm. Wolverine. He's a cuck, whatever. <laughs> but this kid's just, I don't care about him. I don't, I don't know that it's that he's bad. I just don't care. I don't yeah. know any. I don't know anything about him. Well, and it's impossible not to look stupid with that thing over your yeah, eyes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It does seem like it's worse than it was, though. Like, I feel like in previous iterations of that stuff, it was... Also, he, he like, wears the visor all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of sunglasses. As opposed to sunglasses yeah. and a leather jacket with yeah. your blue, yeah. blue suit and yeah. yellow straps. Right, right. But he's, I guess the, the way, it was always kind of unclear. I always thought he just focused and fired, but I guess there's a button on the side no, now. yeah. I think it just raises, I always assumed he just pressed a button that raises, raises the thing. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. So he just looks so at what like he wants to do. it's always coming out of his eyes. Yeah, and yeah it's constantly blasting out of his but eyes. red, some red will stop it. But red stops it. I mean that's dumb, but that's comic book dumb. You can't <laughs> yeah. blame the movie for that. That's fine. I yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I knew what I was in for. I'm not mad at the movie. I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. I still I still think it's better than Apocalypse. Yeah. Um but it's hard to be that bad. It's it's great though because we've seen hundreds of million dollars thrown at a thing of showing Disney what not to do. And that's great. That's they the already, best that's Disney the best already thing. knew. Oh, <laughs> Well, yeah, so there are several action scenes in this movie, and not a single one of them comes close to something from a Marvel film. It's like they can't stage more than one actor in a shot doing an effect shot. It's a, as if they're trying to do cheap when they have $200 million. There are choreographies. Should we talk it's about spoilers trash. when we well, come back? Yeah, yeah, uh, we'll talk about spoilers. Let me tell you guys real quick about Robinhood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started. 
so you can start investing at any level. The simple intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections, such as 100 most popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. So Robinhood is giving listeners of Filmhouse a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at filmhouse.robinhood.com. That's filmhouse.robinhood.com. And thanks, Robinhood, for bringing us here this week to talk about Dark Phoenix. And yeah, uh, I think we are going to unleash the spoilers here. Um, I will throw up a time code around here if we ever stop spoiling stuff. Um, so yeah, have at spoilers. Something I thought was actually really interesting before we get into that is this whole the whole end of this film was reshot. The train really? sequence was completely added on the like a third year act, after. They had to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, was did they say what the original ending was? Or yes. Right yes. Yes. And there's there's a few things. There's some people say that the aliens were supposed to be scrolls. That's makes never sense. been mm-hmm. confirmed, but it makes total sense since mm-hmm. they're shapeshifters. Mm-hmm. But um, also, again, going back to the creating your own shit for something that has five decades worth of lore, they created their own bad guys for this. What She's they, like, my name's Kruk, <laughs> and I'm from the Glob Glass universe. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Yeah. Uh, so they didn't create that whole cloth, but it is a deep cut that yeah. no one has ever thought about since like 1968. Perfect. Great. Good uh, job. Yeah, Dabari. Wow. So yeah, I think scrolls could have been cool. So originally the ending, uh, it was just Cyclops and Professor X going to the UN, I guess, <laughs> to ask the UN's help to fight aliens. Cool. And then they all turn into scrolls, and then Phoenix shows up, blasts them all, and goes to space and blasts a bunch of spaceships. Blasts the mothership. That's yeah. a that's a poochie of a ending <laughs> yeah. if I've ever uh, seen it's one. It's basically the exact ending of Captain Marvel. Yeah. Where she goes up to the spaceship and then... It's not well, and, and Kinberg was saying that he wanted it to be more like the end of Civil War when it's just, you know, three characters coming together because he thought that was more personal. Did um, he see it? Pardon? He saw the, he the Civil he saw War? The trailer played the before another War. movie he saw. <laughs> but I, I guess, um, you know, they did a lot of test screenings and people wanted to see all of the X-Men fighting at the end of the next men movie. Mm-hmm. Shocking. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they redid it all. Interesting. I don't know. Okay. It, the, the train fight was okay. It yeah. seemed like it could have been in any action movie that ever existed. There's a couple, I mean, Nightcrawler was cool in like yeah, the when you went 30 ham, second thing he did. He started stabbing people. Fight. Yeah, his motivation was, what was misplaced. Yeah. A a guard who uh, made a snide comment he at was him. like, my son used to be a huge fan of yours. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how does your son know I got arrested tonight? Did you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're breaking some sort of law. Yeah, uh, there he is. There's cool. our Classic guy. beast. Um, yeah, but then later on. <laughs> the hero we all want. Later mm-hmm. on, he tries to save the guard. Based off the bad choreography, it appears that he does, but then he also doesn't. Didn't he, like, poof him in front of a truck or something? No. He tried to poof him out of the way of a knife. Oh. But then by the time he poofed him, I guess he got stabbed. Mm. I don't know. It's really shot shot very poorly. Yeah. And then so he gets so upset that then he starts stabbing all of them. And then he put he poof someone <laughs> in front of a train. And it, I guess the, the aliens, the we'll just call them the non-scrolls, they're... Good title. They were... Bless you. I was unclear of what their powers were and were not. So, like, in the beginning of the movie, you see them twisting someone's chest, and you're sort of like, oh, my God, they can just kill you in one hit. But I thought this was going to be one of those moments where they, you know, they show a bad guy being really powerful in the beginning, and then they never do it again because you can't kill any of the main characters. And that's kind of what happened. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, their, their whole motive, their power set was ambiguous, and their whole motivation I don't. I mean, well, there's just. I guess they were trying to get the Phoenix Force. They wanted the, the solar flare. The last fight is cool in theory, except for the part where the bad guys show up, and all that they are are a bunch of people in like tan suits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's Street I clothes. don't. Yeah, it's like dudes. Yeah. There's one point where the fight spills into a train yard or something, or like a weird factory. I think it's the thing. ending of Iron Man and, Three. And it's impossible to tell. Whether or not some of those people Phoenix is just eviscerating are just workers there running away, <laughs> like because they just like look yeah. like. And I was like, so they changed into the people that would work at this place. It just 
I don't know. It just it's weird. It they just threw ants. They may mm. as well have been fighting ants. Yeah. I would have almost preferred that. <laughs> Um, Giant ants? Because they do do cool stuff. Magneto does cool stuff. Oh, yeah, when he's got all the guns. All of them are mm-hmm. using their powers in cool ways, including the people who are there to die, um, like Dreadlocks <laughs> and, <laughs> and, Purple and Knife Fruit Girl. <laughs> who also had a name. I can find well, it. Well, she's a black queen, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. She's like a Hellfire Club. Celine. Person. Again, deep cuts. Yeah. Where's Cannonball? Where's Cannonball? Is, is what he said as he stood up and <laughs> yeah. walked out of the theater. <laughs> upset. But refund, ultimately, please. I think my big problem is it takes about 96 minutes to get there. Mm-hmm. There's like one action sequence before that in a, in a New York street, which is terrible. Look, very much looks like a back lot somewhere. Really, really. No really control of space. So boring, and you don't know what's going on. At one point, Nightcrawler's like, I can't stop teleporting why? I, and it had something to do with that the purple? Celine yeah. woman, but they mm-hmm. don't explain it. And, and then, uh, yeah. there's the helicopter stuff. That part Which, was weird. Yeah, not, it was really weird. I, well, Any, anytime people are straining <laughs> with their powers, well, no, it's hard I, I, to I, not mm-hmm. be stupid. That wasn't so bad. So <clears throat> I For guess this scene too. Yeah, it's it's Phoenix using her telekinesis power versus Magneto's magnetism. Yeah, and they're both fighting over a helicopter, <clears throat> but. The helicopter's shaking wildly, and Magneto's like, get on! <laughs> and, guy, and all the soldiers are like, you got it, Magneto! Yeah. Yeah. They're like oh, hanging Captain on yeah. Yeah. And then he goes, he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how helicopters work. <laughs> I, I wish, because Fastman or anything has such great facial features when he's, he, he's really good at emoting, like there's that meme of like his, his giant horse teeth when he's smiling, and I just, I loved him holding this helicopter doing this thing. I just want him to go, get on! And the, the soldiers go, like, no. No, 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 no. Like, that idea. That, that's, that we should be getting off. Yeah, that uh, would have been like them helping each other. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And the thing's shaking. <laughs> I was like, that That would have required some self-awareness, I guess, but because well, the script said he then throws a <laughs> helicopter. There's, it's, it's also funny, too, because that scene... Magneto is living on a farm made out of shipping containers. Yeah, is it it's supposed to be Genosha, I think, right? Oh, is that, that what that was? I, I believe so. Okay. Genosha? Yeah. Not, it was like not the island heaven for mutants, right? Asteroid M? Well, yeah. <laughs> that would have been way cooler. Why um, not have it on the asteroid? They had, there were so many cool elements to the Dark Phoenix saga that they just were like, no, we're they, not going to do this. If they put it on the asteroid, the helicopter couldn't have got <laughs> that's there true, that's for the cool true. helicopter. Get on the space. There'd be one guy in the asteroid with a helmet <laughs> on. Throw space um, <laughs> but either Wouldn't way, that have been awesome, though? either way, the military shows up and they're like, we're looking for Phoenix. She mm. turned over cop cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see any cops murdered or anything. Not really. No. I mean, may- maybe some. I mean, I get it. Car damage. Like yeah. it, there was clearly tension mounting, maybe between. There wasn't even really like an instigator. Normally, you see someone who's trying to push the government against the mutants. Yeah. But the movie sets up that Charles Xavier has a phone with a big <laughs> X on it that calls the president. The president. <laughs> yeah. Um, he and President. Bush? I don't know. It's uh, that's the other thing too with the the timeline. This is what bothers me with the movie, is they 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 want to assume itself upon you and say it takes place in our world of 1992, when the Endeavor is taking off and President looks nothing like the President who was the President of the time is sitting in office. I go just just give the ship a different name. Don't call it the Endeavor. Like don't try to pretend you're part of. History just say like it's an alternate timeline. Mm-hmm. They called the spaceship something well, else. That that was one of the really cool parts of First Class and Days of Future Past is that they took the time period seriously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with the production design. This uh, you can't tell. It doesn't it's matter. Ninety two. Yeah. I mean, and, and Magneto is supposed to be seventy four years old, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> by according well, also, to their their timeline that they're trying to stick to for whatever reason. Like he tried to murder the president, and they just gave him an island. One, like I said, I, keep, I I stand by this. Every movie's a mini reboot of itself because yeah. they set up this whole thing with Magneto. In Days of Future Past, he what moves a stadium, and mm. there's sentinels, and everyone's gonna kill everyone. And then he's like, "I will go start a, a new life with a family, so that they can get murdered in the beginning, and I have mm-hmm. motivation to join Apocalypse." Like, mm-hmm. wow, dumb. And then in Real Apocalypse, dumb. he. He becomes one of the horsemen. Yeah, and almost, almost ends kill, and yeah. destroys the world. You can stay on your farm, Magnet Man. Yeah, <laughs> watching this does just make me want to watch Apocalypse. Days of Future Past. Oh, and Last Stand. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a moment in this movie that I did like <laughs> for the 
uh, cheese that I like of Last Stand, mm. which is when uh, at the end, Charles Xavier is at the cafe and Magneto shows up with this little chess set. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to have their little talk and they're going to play a little chess. Because mm-hmm. uh, I do love the moment at the end of Last Stand when Magneto's in the park, the sad old powerless man, and he's at the chessboard alone. And then mm-hmm. he tries to, you know, move the chess piece a little bit. I Because I do love their friendship so much more than mm-hmm. anything. And, and it I, I honestly wasn't any at all... Uh, an emotional payoff in any way. It was yeah. really bad. But for me, that unearned. still appreciates... Yeah, unearned. For the uh, Though I appreciate those things, I still was like, okay, all I, right. I couldn't remember. Is chess a part of their friendship? In, in the first class, they yes. at least played chess. They at least yeah. played I, chess. I don't remember if it was But it's part. not like an ongoing thing every movie. They have their chess well, base. I X-Men, know it's a metaphor. But in yeah. X-Men 1 and 2, they're playing with glass pieces. No, yeah, I know X-Men. X, the other timeline definitely had chess as a major thing, which is it's why... It's all one series, in, James. In X-Men yeah. 3, him playing alone yeah. is, like, supposed to be sad, uh-huh. right? Um, but uh, I still think that, like... They were like, oh, and also chess. Like someone just remembered, like, oh, and also yeah. chess, because that they it's like, have. It, I it's mean, not it's part of their writing. relationship. It's like, like we'll bring it all back around with the chess game, but yeah. it, it was not it, earned. There's also two characters. It, it, the X Men messaging is weird too, where we're talking about the amount of blue characters, but clearly Jennifer Lawrence really doesn't want to be in no. these movies and yeah. doesn't want to wear blue makeup anymore. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many scenes where she's normal, but then also Beast can be normal whenever he wants yeah. too. So the lesson is. Be yourself, unless it's annoying for the actor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to have to put on all this makeup. Jennifer Lawrence really did seem like she didn't want to be there. Oh my there. god! I, I like, mean, I don't it blame. It was her. very obvious. I, she was clearly fulfilling contract obligations, but, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, McAvoy and Fassbender are both, you know, top class actors. Yeah, they weren't phoning it in. They weren't. Well, They're I professionals. mean, professionals. Yeah, I don't know. I think they. Yeah. They are all probably they, a little bit older. I would say maybe they're. Here's a the theory. Complete theory. I'd say they're maybe older men who don't necessarily have a window of their career in which case, in which they have to be at the top of their game, yeah. whereas Jennifer Lawrence probably does. Ten more years, maybe. I don't yeah. like. I don't well, know how much longer Hollywood is going to play that game with her. They also were like, "Hey, come back and have this romantic uh, climactic scene with this guy that you were engaged to 10 years ago. Oh, like they just keep what? bringing her, her back and being like, yeah, come back in the movie and be with, no. you know, spend six months with your ex-boyfriend, Nicholas Holt, who you, yeah. you know. I didn't even know that. Yeah, because I think they dated during like the first one or whatever. Like they were too, they were pretty serious, I guess. I think that, I thought they were engaged or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, it's also maybe a personal thing too where she's like, I don't just want, I just don't want to, be in it. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. She it seems like she doesn't want to be there. And then also, sp- big spoiler, when she dies, you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you're like, thank God. Not because you're glad she's gone, but now she's free. Yeah. They kind of <laughs> gave that up in a trailer. They did, yeah. Which I think is pretty kind of ballsy. Maybe they knew people mm-hmm. weren't going to be interested in this film, so they were trying to get them I, to do it. I forgot Jennifer Lawrence was in this. Uh, like They, they kind of didn't really advertise she was in yeah. it much. Yeah. Like until the movie started, and I did. Oh yeah! And I'm like, yeah. she's not like the leader. She's the leader. That's right. This is stupid. <laughs> yeah, same. I I still remember that as a kid seeing X two, being like, I can't wait to see Mystique's backstory when she was the leader of the X Men. Yeah. <laughs> to um, your point of uh, this movie just shoehorning in made up X Men or like Z tier X Men. Say what you will about Last Stand and how badly it portrayed them, but it's still crammed in as many. <laughs> Recognizable X Men up, up to the wazoo, up to <laughs> the true. wazoo angel. They only had one reference in this film, which was to what? Uh, Dazzler, which oh, was like yeah. a really stupid X Men, but at least they did something. Yeah, yeah. she's like thrown an EDM yeah, concert exactly yeah. in the woods. Year, year oh, of God. Her Lord, 1992. I told you that was so weird and stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh. I mean Dazzler's pretty stupid. Yeah, yeah, but Jubilee that was also down. a pretty of, <clears throat> of the things to choose from. Dazzler and Jubilee are two different people now, right? Yes. Um, yes. Always have been. Some okay. more powers, though. Now that we're in spoiler territory, too, uh, I can bring up Josh Flanagan, a friend of the channel. Who? He uh, made up a real. He, he brought up a really good point to me that they should have made the Jean Grey parent car accident stuff a reveal. Mm-hmm. Like oh, we yeah. should have known her parents were dead. She should not have remembered exactly what happened. That should have been a piece of information that, as maybe she, you know. She's mm-hmm. got the Phoenix Force, and that that comes to light later. 
um, would have made it much more interesting for did that to be. Did it open with that? It yeah. did, yeah. It's very open. Yeah. And, and he told me that, and I was like, yeah, that would have been a much more interesting character yeah. re- uh, unveiling well, for her. Because they made it made it so, like, oh, Professor X, you're so horrible for what you've done to her. But he Not just, really. I guess, I, it didn't seem that bad. He was trying to help her get out of, <laughs> you know, some dark well, time they, in her life. Were you and I was going to say, the dad, there's a scene afterwards that they hide from the audience for the dad's like, mm. The dad's like, I don't want her. Take her. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, uh, he should have just rolled in there. I guess he was rolling in there and not trying to say that you, your dad Ooh. doesn't, want, doesn't you. want you. And then also the dad, he's like, your dad's dead. But then also his dad's going to stay in the phone book and keep his name. <laughs> he actually lives three blocks from here. Yeah, and not live that far away. I don't know. It was weird how they made Charles Xavier this, like, fame whore, too. I like, actually now found he, that a little interesting. Uh, to like twist him from being like this great perfect goodness to like slightly Maybe. dark. Maybe it just felt like so like, out of left field. He, 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 <laughs> they didn't sell that for yeah. sure. No. Yeah. Nothing was earned in no. this movie is basically the takeaway. Reboot. And then nothing all, by the fact that nothing was earned, it means that nothing is cathartic. So at the end, like Charles Xavier is a fame whore. He's confronted by Beast, who's like, "You're a fame whore." Apologize, mm-hmm. and he's like, "No, let's just have a drink." And then he gets pissed, and then he gets pissed no. off. So then Beast leaves him, mm-hmm. and then later on, they're both on the train, and then he goes, "I'm sorry," and then Beast goes, "Okay." Exactly. That's <laughs> all he it's wanted. Like, that's the. It's, that's not exactly what it really meant. Yeah. James, you know? was it you that pointed out that the school should have been named like? Mystique school. Yeah, it was also <laughs> weird. Raven yeah, school. at the end of the movie, yeah, Raven. they they call it because uh, Jean Grey school for young goes super whatever. goes supernova yeah. to burn up Jessica Chastain. That's it. Yeah. And then she flies away, and then so then in memory of her, there's a shot of them going. They rename the school the to, of the school to the Jean yeah. Grey School for Gifted Youngsters, and mm-hmm. I was like. Someone else pretty important died too. Yeah, I mean, well, one of them died. The other yeah. flew into space. <laughs> uh, so only one of them died. Yeah. And so we're going to name it after the person who murders the other one. <laughs> 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 just seemed weird. It, yeah. it, all those things just seemed weird. Oh, because I'm pretty sure it was cathartic for the film cast, and they're like, "And that's a wrap on Jennifer Lawrence." Uh, and she got in a car and drove yeah. away. Didn't yeah. <laughs> didn't say goodbye to anybody. Well, her new director boyfriend or ever picked her up and. Took her away via helicopter. Like, it it makes sense that they're just like whatever. Let's just forget this character was in it. But once again, it's just it's it's a lot of setup with no payoff, and then no setup with no payoff as well. You know, oh good. I was just gonna say, uh, I didn't really like Captain Marvel all that much. But you know, it was a great change of pace. An alien that doesn't sound like a robot. Oh yeah. Ben Mendelsohn as a charming, <clears throat> funny, kind of goofy. Alien yeah. was way more yeah. appealing to watch than Jessica Chastain going, I am here for like in this monotone. Vo- Why is give me give me one of her lines and I'll, I'll do I'll do his Ben Middleson and I'll try to fix it. Okay. You're just gonna do a lisp. Just, we know give, me, okay. just give me the line. I can do Jean Grey, you have the Phoenix inside you. Jean Grey, you have <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> you've right. got the Phoenix inside you. We're more Australian. I don't think he was Australian as the scroll. He was more th- human. What was he? <laughs> more human. Yes. Human. More human. <laughs> um, so yeah, like honestly, there's the villain is just terrible. Yeah. They don't really set up. You know, I think Apocalypse is terrible, but I think Oscar. At least you know what he Oscar was. Oscar Isaac is a better actor, and at a certain point, they put Magneto there too. <laughs> so you know, mm-hmm. they they did a weird thing to. I've, I I can't draw an exact comparison. In which they do this, but I, I like that there was a the, going back to the fight scene at the park. It's them all trying to they, they somehow got a GPS beacon or whatever in her head in Phoenix's head, and everyone's trying to go there to either save her or kill her. Except she doesn't need either because no one can kill her because she's the most powerful being <laughs> on the planet. But Magneto's are like, I got this. I have a helmet on. They're like, she has telekinesis. She can cry. Oh, she's doing it. <laughs> and she starts crushing it. He goes, he's like, I didn't think this through. <laughs> yeah. And then Beast is like, I'm going to get in there and rip her asunder. Like, Beast, you don't have any powers. <laughs> well, you can flip <laughs> around. You're just blue yeah, and you jump. Cat. Magneto's also like, <laughs> I have cat. a plan. And yeah. he's like, while I'm talking to her, I'm going to use the Beetlejuice technique, which is take the stairwell, <laughs> take the stairwell banister and try and stay. It's not even close. Yeah. It's not even close. 
Yes. Um, so it, it was all for not. Mm-hmm. So um, I, th- I think looking at some of Marvel's success recently, going into space, having space aliens, you mm-hmm. know, someone like Thanos, they dropped so many cool parts of the Dark Phoenix storyline. Like they had the Hellfire Club established from first class. From first class. class. You know, them kind of tempting Baker. her and like pushing her towards the darkness. Interesting part of the story. It had one of Wolverine's greatest moments where he's like down in the basement in the sewers and has to fight himself out into the mansion. Um, it, all the Shi'ar stuff, like the aliens could have been the Shi'ar. Yeah. And then you've got the like the gladiator dude with the huge mohawk. He's well, like that Superman. You described in that way. Maybe means. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's cool. I mean, they, Thanos worked. They, he's a purple headed. The big thing is, is that at a certain point. Marvel understood how to go cosmic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They understood. And they started with something completely out there and different and unrelated. And then they established this cosmic thing. So that way, when you take Bruce Banner and you put him in a, a space gladiatorial arena with Jeff Goldblum, mm-hmm. who's got a little blue goatee or whatever, <laughs> like a little blue spec, you're like, yeah. You're yeah, like, okay I'm with on it. Board. You're yeah. all right. And then when, when Thanos shows up and he's fighting around, by the way, on Titan, which mm-hmm. is just a space planet that's falling apart and no one has helmets. So it's not, no one cares. It's all, sure. uh, you, you, you're you okay with it because it's kind of built up to it. Mm-hmm. For some reason, X-Men always felt like it had to stay tied to like Northern New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like to we can't school. leave the state of New York. Yeah. But like in terms of scope. Sure. Like There's... it never felt like it went past the border. Except in this movie where, once again, they, they want to insist upon itself and say, it takes place in this time. Mm-hmm. We're going into space with a, a spaceship that was built in the 19, you know, 70, with 1970s technology. Yeah, just a jet. And then they're like, well, let's take the Blackbird up into space. <laughs> they're like, is it built for that? Who cares? Yeah. We're, we have <laughs> so much, we yeah. have so much future, futuristic technology. Like, in... Not to make, not to beat this dead horse, but like in the MCU, they at least they make it kind of clear that technology is sort of becoming prevalent everywhere yeah. in a weird way. Like it's not just Tony Stark holding on to it. Like it's Wakanda too. Yeah, exactly. So like there's there's other stuff. Whereas in this world, it's the, the X Men have all the cool technology, yeah. and they don't. Even though Professor X is best friends with the president, you, you're not seeing like a cool pseudo futuristic uh, spaceship going into space. They just go. No, no, no. We're, time has moved on as as it does, and the X Men just have all the cool shit. I felt really bad for the astronauts because like they planned for you know mm-hmm. years Trained. to go up into space <laughs> and that. But and then the astronauts like, blue freaks yeah, going up like, there whenever space. they want. It. Yeah, he's like, you built a turret for the guy with the laser vision. Yeah, and Magneto gets shipping containers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the government said we have these left over. Yeah, he's like, I've gone vegan. You can all okay. have your orgies in these. <laughs> it did look orgy friendly. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> like, no one was surprised that there were aliens either. No, no one well, was like, "Oh, oh yeah. aliens!" Are you that's wild. Mention Go ahead. The best one of the, yeah. my favorite parts about the whole movie is they get on this train and they're trying to convince. It's weird. They're trying to convince the soldiers there that they're not a threat, even though they are a threat because they did just get into a big fight in the middle of a New York street and blow mm-hmm. up a ton of shit. Mm-hmm. But they're like, "No, you don't understand. There's aliens. Uh-huh. That they're the real threat." Then the aliens show up. And the soldier, like the soldier hears over the radio as another train car is trying to stop them. They're like shooting him. They're like, they're not mutants. They're not mutants. When they all they've done is exhibit mutant like powers. <laughs> like it's uh, it's not like the aliens could even explain to them unless yeah. he grabbed them. And he's like, we're from space. And like, <laughs> if that's what happened, now get on the comms and tell them. Like there's no way what they've yeah. done makes them seem any different than what already exists in this world. The the aliens' motivation was, um, I would say, lacking. It, I I was waiting. I felt like we got uh, phase one of three. And there's still two more parts of it the, because they're like, our world was destroyed by this solar flare. And then we chased it in space to here. Mm-hmm. And now we want it. And they're like, okay. Yep. There's got to be a twist here, right? Like maybe you sent the solar flare or something. No. Like, hmm. like your, your planet destroyer or something. Just Also, we've already yeah. been here. Yeah. <laughs> That's my other favorite thing, too. <laughs> and in the beginning of the movie, we look like Groots. We Is invaded. this in the movie at all? No, there's a lot of cut scenes. Yeah, I don't know what that's from. There's deleted scenes. There's that scene of them in the church. That didn't happen. Yeah, because Michael Fassbender was in a wheelchair. But Charles <laughs> Xavier's They filmed it wrong. Wrong. They yeah. accidentally filmed it wrong. <laughs> Cut the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys set me up so much because you, you were telling me that Professor X's feet scene was so funny. 
And maybe, Dude. I don't know, maybe it was just good sound in the theater, Can but I was like. Can you imagine James McAvoy having to film that? I, I'm pretty sure they had him on strings and they were like a marionette. What's they were actually cool, moving like, What's the worst thing you could ever do? To someone who can't use their legs, make them walk. Make them look like a puppet uh, walking. That's the worst thing you can do. Everybody I, knows it, and she knew it because she was in his head. You guys hyped me up so much. I thought there was going to be a scene because for some reason Professor X gets drunk a lot in this movie. Mm-hmm. After like the president breaks up with him, <laughs> he, like, friend president. He's like, I thought he was going to do something where they're gonna be like, "Come on, professor, get out of there," and he'd be like, "Hey, check this out," and he starts wiggling his feet or something. I was like, "Oh, there's got to be something stupid, right?" Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Yeah. Surely they could have like cool robotic legs or something if they have a jet. Sure, I mean, Rhodey's got them. We were talking the other day. They also put uh, James <laughs> McAvoy, who is clearly coming off of having filmed uh, Mr. Glass, Glass. Yeah. so he's jacked in like these tight <laughs> turtlenecks. <laughs> But then there's also at one point where they like he like references that he can't walk or mm. someone references it and they show a shot of his legs and it's just like jeans with these giant throbbing <laughs> quads underneath. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me let me tell you guys real quick about Upstart, uh, the sponsor this week. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard especially if your FICO score isn't great. Sky-high interest rates can make it incredibly hard for you to break out of the revolving debt cycle. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high-interest credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond their traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes that you're more than just your credit score. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. The best part? Once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or to make a large purchase. Free yourself from the burden of high-interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash filmhouse to find out how low your Upstart rate is. So checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash filmhouse. Upstart.com slash filmhouse. And thank you Upstart for bringing us here this week to talk about Dark Phoenix. Is this the worst X-Men movie? No. What's the worst one? Origins Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty rough. I haven't yeah. seen it in a long time. Might not be boring though. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> has it last? Str- it was. Has a strong opening, but man, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Ryan true. Reynolds, Deadpool. We, I was doing a thing after I saw this where I was like trying to remember all of the X Men movies because there's mm-hmm. a lot of them, and I yeah. completely forgot that the Wolverine existed. I don't think the Wolverine is bad. No, I th- so, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fine. It was better movie. than Origins. Yeah. Way better than Origins, mm-hmm. and it's also set up for Logan. Got a great end credits, post credits scene, too. Yeah, except that it's, <laughs> no it's after doesn't the, make yeah, sense. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, it, but we see our guys again. That's a, But if you watch <laughs> you The crush. Wolverine, it's a perfect I love their friendship. Um, encapsulation of how they treat this franchise, yeah. mm-hmm. which is what came before doesn't matter, and what happens afterwards doesn't matter either, no. which is fine, except then you can't say that it's one big story. You can't use Dark Phoenix as a payoff for the things that happened in a movie two events prior because, or even one movie prior, because yeah. no one cares. Yep. Um, Everyone's already forgotten by the time they're sitting in the theater. I, I, it, I'm it. i just happy it's over. Yeah, yeah. Me I'm, so, mercy death. Yeah, I, I think... I ha- said bring back McAvoy, bring back Fastbender. I'm okay with those guys. They can make the transition. I think you just start fresh. I think you will too, but I yeah. think I like I still have enjoyed them mm-hmm. throughout, and they've continued yeah. Yeah. to try. What's the, the Xavier, Magneto, and Wolverine are the three most yeah. clutch roles 100%. for the X Men. Yeah. Um, really? No, when the, when no in first because in first class they've got the the Wolverine ma- cameo, right? Yeah, and yeah. That, that was their fuck. Which they actually one. even tie it into Days of Future Past in a smart way. Well, yeah, but but th- we see him in the, in. First class. We just see yeah, him in the bar, they, right? They walk in and he just tells them to fuck yeah. off. Yeah. And as far as I knew at the time, I thought they were just rebooting X-Men with a completely new cast. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know that, you know, they were going to have him continue to play Wolverine and whatever. Uh, and so, like, I was like, oh, it's cool that they they were mm-hmm. like, Hugh Jackman's still good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we're keeping him around. Like, of course. It also I'm totally, makes sense because Wolverine doesn't age. Yeah, I'm yeah. totally fine with hanging on to people that 
that work well in their roles mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, keeping them or going. just move on to completely different characters like maybe maybe you don't do Wolverine for a good while like maybe we've had enough yeah. Wolverine but he's got to be worth like a billion dollars or something like, I, I'd yeah. say as Hugh Jackman he is yeah I don't know that anyone for, for I, I think some time could fill those just, shoes. I just want them yeah. to get a dude that's like five foot one <laughs> and jacked as shit to play mm-hmm. Wolverine stocky yeah yeah, like a Tom Hardy type actually would not not be bad, but... Chop him, chop him off at the knee. Yeah, well, something like that. But I, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I, like, I'm glad it's over, and I think now that the timing is fine, because after Endgame, where we had this 10-year build-up to this thing, you could now do a 10-year build-up to Galactus. You could do a 10-year build-up to Apocalypse. You could do a 10-year build-up to the Dark Phoenix. Like, you can do these things now, and they're, gonna, they're going to do that, <laughs> because... They use Thanos. <laughs> so yeah. So what is what is what did we learn from like whatever twenty years of X Men? Like what is what what should Marvel do to like restart it? Or like what were the good things to take away? I don't know. I mean, I don't even know how you slide this back into yeah the current ongoing Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. I don't know how Captain Marvel fits in with the X Men. Yeah, there's yeah. Storm. There's still I, Deadpool. And there's also Deadpool. Too yeah. much money to turn down. Yeah, Deadpool is going to be... I, I think you do an X-Force movie and at some point, but then, yeah, maybe you don't start with X-Men. Maybe you start with the characters of the X-Men, and maybe it's maybe it's not Professor X who f- is the founder of it. Maybe he's, like, someone who inherits it, something like that. Like, you could do some other side story. But then again, maybe these, these stories are just so ingrained that you just you want what? Beast? Like, he doesn't want the school. Like Who? it's like a comedy of errors. Like Professor X, like somebody's like <laughs> uh, Charles, I need, and he goes, oh, "I don't want this school." The Jean Grey School of Gifted Youngsters. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. I don't want to have to handle this. I don't know. It, it could be an, uh, an allegory for how Kevin Feige doesn't want the X Men, yeah. <laughs> and it's too much work They're forced upon him. Yeah, I don't. Know. I, I, in yeah, you know, as always in in Marvel, I trust. So whatever they're gonna do with it is fine. But I, God, I, d- I would not want to be in those shoes where. We're still we're so close coming off of this. Like I think I still think it's even too soon for like Fantastic Four. I don't know because those characters are so beloved. <laughs> Invisible Person and Stretch Man. And well, that's the beginnings of the Human that's the Flame. beginning of the Sue Marvel Storm. universe. Those Fantastic Four. I feel like Charles Xavier is always watching young women sleep. It's just me. <laughs> you think he's a real creep? <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't he's he got the school mis- for children. Didn't he watch Mystique sleep. Do you at think a he's ever point jerked too? off with Cerebro on? It doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing works down there. He has to go into his, like, mind palace. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're damn right. I was more confused, too. Who's teaching these classes? That school <laughs> That school is so crowded. Well, and we remember- see in Last Stand the classes being taught. Yeah. If, Adam, if you care to see a window <laughs> inside. Yeah, well, I know. It's like, uh, well, it's not Cyclops. It's like Storm is yeah. teaching and stuff. Right, but this one, it's just kids running around everywhere. And yeah. then Professor X is like, they they went to space a mere two minutes ago, yeah. and now us, they're here. Yeah. Should we clean take, them off? Yeah, <laughs> take, <laughs> take, the day off. <laughs> take the day off, children. Yeah. And they're like, there's no teachers here. And they're just running around with their yeah. stupid powers, like shooting fireworks off. When was the last time you watched Last Stand? When it came out. Truth was, yeah. I saw it's it once. I think you need to see time. it again. I think you need I, to watch I it I could again. do it, yeah. I mean, why not? You're a uh, stand apologist. I, I, I do stand... For the last it's the, it's the first time Enjoy I saw it. a movie where a meme went over my head where oh, he yeah. said, I'm the juggernaut, juggernaut? bitch. Oh. And I was like, I don't, is that a thing he says? I didn't know. And then someone's like, you got to watch this video. And that video's not very funny. I don't. It was funny before X-Men The Last Stand ruined it. You know what? I'm was not, it? I was yes. ever a huge X-Men child, fan, so I wasn't angry. I wasn't angry child. about that movie. Maybe that's part of it. I, I just remember being disappointed because like, oh, well, if they're ever going to do Juggernaut in a movie, he's going to look like this. And then they put him in Deadpool 2. I was like, oh, that's how you just do them all CGI. That's a yeah, great idea. That's way better. <laughs> yeah. Better Juggernaut. This is, this is a good. So same with Beast. I think uh, moving forward, if you, I mean, we all need Beast <laughs> in our lives. Not I think you, this Beast. I think you do. Well, not, not my Beast, but... If you do another beast, and I think you, maybe you do get Kelsey Grammer to do the voice, but mm-hmm. I say you yeah. uh, you you ape some. You do like a circus. Get circus. You get Andy yeah. Circus ape style, yeah. And you just CGI. Uh, I know it's a little expensive. Blue underwear. Yeah, but like, if they're smart, they'll do exactly what the cartoon did and just put them in jail for the first yeah, put them ten in jail. movies. <laughs> circus body Grammer voice. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd buy that. I'm. I do. The makeup looks terrible. 
I mean, they did a great job on doing the actual makeup, but seeing yeah. I've and. I realize I don't want a real life beast because of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kelsey Grammer, I guess, looked better because he was bigger. I don't yeah. know. Why are we talking yeah. about beasts? Moving on. Oh, Sorry. I think it was Bruce I was talking with about how Kelsey Grammer in Back the Last beast. Stand, he can't fit into the uniform. Yeah. And oh, there's really? a whole thing where they like make fun of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Check out Last Stand. So for, for the people out there that are watching this to decide if they should go see Dark Phoenix, can anyone say, yes, you should go see Dark Phoenix? I don't think so. I, 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 don't mean, think so. Go, I mean, look, if you have any sort of mild interests, I think it's – there's some fine moments. I don't think you're going to miss anything, but, like, it's not the most terrible movie in the world. It's got problems, but all the X-Men movies have problems. So it's just like, yeah, it's par for the course, honestly, and it just doesn't have Wolverine. Yeah. There you go. He's a linchpin, man. Yeah. I think if you are someplace hot and you don't have air conditioning, <laughs> then yes. You, you won't could be probably sad go in a see theater. It. I would say if you've got fifteen dollars in time to burn and you just as are an X Men completionist, you want to watch it, go see it. Otherwise I would say watch an X Men you enjoy and wait for this to come to streaming yeah. for free. <laughs> go see Book Smarts. <laughs> yeah, go. go see Book Smarts. Uh, or watch the Deadwood movie. That one was fun. So fucking cool. I really or, enjoyed it. You did? I did. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I you liked it. it. I watched it this week. I was, great ending. They was, finally deserved it. That was great. It was good stuff. Um, um, I will say this before we end. I forgot this is the most important thing. I didn't say it. I cannot wait for them to stop doing those goddamn collars that stop mutants from yeah, using their powers. It's a really lame it's the la- it, They did it in Deadpool yeah. too. You have this technology that you just put around someone's neck and it stops all their superpowers. Doesn't make sense. Please stop doing that. It's not <laughs> cool. We don't like it. I would I, say I don't want to speak yeah. for everyone in the room. I'm sorry. I, I also hate the colors. I <laughs> loved it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I say you could also it's go stupid. watch whatever season of the cartoon did Dark Phoenix. Um, that went for a little while. That was yeah. like a that was like a ten Third episode season? arc, yeah. right? I mean, I'm I'm guessing I haven't seen that show in. 30 years animation is garbage I'm guessing it looks like trash but yeah. I remember them doing justice to the story yeah, I mean, and she, having she, all the space aliens and the space a, pirates she has stuff. a sash <laughs> that's kind of what happens her eyes turn well, clear and she, she dies everyone thinks Jean Grey is dead yeah. is part, by the way part of the phoenix aspect of it which yeah. they Coming really rush through is that you think the character's dead mm-hmm. and also she wasn't that important to begin with so then when she comes back, you're like, oh, shit, she's back. And she's really powerful now. Wow, that's really cool. But then she's corrupted by that power. That's mm-hmm. what makes – that's an interesting path mm-hmm. to to the story. Not someone appears and then they're powerful and they were in a car accident when they were a Also, kid. then an alien empire shows up, sentences her to death, and then they fight on the moon to yeah. defend her. Yeah. It's so wow. fucking cool. That's cool. Uh, in this movie, she notices there's no pictures of her on the wall, so she – <laughs> she she gets, gets mad. mad. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> that's uh, that's as far as we went with that one. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Yeah. Well, it was a bland movie. Uh, I, like James said, if it's hot outside, maybe go see it. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming around this week, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 X Men out. <laughs> the thing is, I can't picture either of these twinks fighting anyone. <laughs> like, I can't. Well, well, they, 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 Boom. they did say that Robert Pattinson was going to start tra- they said As soon as he got the part, they were oh, going to start training him. Please, <laughs> give him some whey protein. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. He's, he's going to be a great Batman. Christian Bale I just want to make jokes. Christian Bale wasn't that big.